Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop 10 Minute Tool Review. This week we're going to be looking at the Katsu M1 DP XT 10A router. Roll the intro. Okay, so for the last few weeks, I've wanted to change my uh, router. As you will have seen in an earlier video, uh, the Aldi sort of laminate router that I had, the very uh, cheap one, uh, smashed in one of the videos when I was making it. The actual plastic casing, uh, which attached to my router table extension that I made, here's the video for that, uh, completely smashed off. It was only cheap uh, plastic. So I've been thinking for a while about uh, upgrading the uh, router and I've done quite a lot of research and I sort of narrowed it down to two options. The first one being this one, which is the Makita RT0700CX4. Now this Makita router comes in two different options. It comes in the 110 volt, which has a different power supply and it comes into the normal standard plug on the wall 240 volt. I actually got to the stage where I added this to a basket on an online shop um, and I was convinced I was going to buy it. I thought, spend that extra little bit of money, get Makita, you know it's a really well-known brand, they're really good products and this actual router, the RT0700CX, has got fantastic re reviews online. So I got my heart pretty much set on buying that. Last minute, I did some reviews and looked at them and I just thought, mm, let me just have a look, another look at all the competitors. So I considered routers by DeWalt, by Bosch, by other manufacturers, even people like Erbauer, home brand ones. And then I came upon the router that I settled on. Now, this one is quite well known. It's a very, very cheap entry level router, but you'll be quite familiar with it. It is the Katsu router, which is here. The thing about the Katsu is it looks almost identical to the Makita that I was going to go for. On the outside, it looks very similar. I think if you laid the two of them down, you wouldn't really be able to notice the difference. And there's lots and lots of reviews on YouTube about this router and comparing it to the Makita. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna review it in the way that I would in the way that I'm going to use it. So stick around and let's unbox it. Okay, so this is the box. Um, it says on the side the model is the M1DP-XT-10A-01. But when you search for this online, the easiest thing to do is just to search for the manufacturer number, which is 101749. Now, this set, uh, which I'll put a link for in the description, is slightly different. I paid £89 for this set and I bought it from Amazon, but you can buy these sets just literally the router on its own. That's not what I've gone for here. They're doing an offer at the moment. Uh, this is filmed in the middle of January 2022, but they're doing an offer at the moment where you can buy the set that includes the two additional bases and it's only a little bit more money. And when you look at the price of the additional bases, like a plunger outer base, which we'll see in a minute, uh, it was well worth buying all three of them together because the cost of the other bases and this together would have been quite a lot higher. So let's open it up and have a look inside. So, inside the box we have um, a standard set of Katsu uh, instructions and it looks like some spare uh, router bushes there, I think, in the top corner. Not a very thick uh, booklet, but I know from reviews online it hasn't got the most fantastic of um, instructions. So, that looks like um, the... Dust extraction there, uh, there's also a spanner in there and one of the threaded screws. This is the actual um, router itself. It looks like it's got the plunge um, router base on it. I have to say straight off, it, it's got some weight to it. Uh, that has, it's very big. And this is the, I think this is like the fence. Um, and these are the other two bases that come with it. So as I said, it came with um, three bases. It was a three bases set. So let's just quickly uh, unpack all of these and see 
what they look like. We'll start with the actual rail trip stuff. It is, um, it's very well protected in the wrapping, um, but no case. And I, I happen to know that um, Makita routers, I think you get a really nice uh, case that goes with them. But then again, you know, it doesn't really matter what the router case looks like, does it? It's the router that's the most important thing. See if I can get it out. I have to say, I am impressed so far, um, especially with that base. That's solid metal, very good. I know it's got quite a rudimentary depth uh, system on it there, but I have to say, yeah, I mean, I'm impressed with that already. Nicer quality than I thought it was gonna be. So that's the router. Let's have a look at the uh, other bases. They like the bubble wrap, don't they? And I think obviously the katsu, um, I'm pretty sure it, well, it must be made in China. So uh, there's the base. Again, nice, solid, it feels like nice, solid metal. Uh, and obviously the work zone one, which was a budget router, I'm not, I'm not gonna deny that. But the work zone one, all of these bits were made out of plastic, but just this router on its own, if you were just to buy the, the bog standard, um, router on its own, it's not actually that much more expensive than the work zone equivalent. Okay, so uh, this base is interesting. Uh, this is the tilt base and um, Oh, that's very stiff. Um, there is a great uh, video on um, Casual DIY, Thomas's channel, about um, the Katsu router, and he demonstrates that how to use some of these, but essentially it allows you uh, to route on an angle, um, which is really good. Again, same, uh, same sort of build quality. I have to say I'm impressed with that. I, it's not... Um, it's not the sort of cheap and plasticky um, thing I was expecting, to be honest with you. So that's the three bases um, that come in the set. The standard base, the tilting base, and the plunge routing base. If you buy the set and you don't, you, you don't get this particular set, if you just buy the router, uh, my understanding is you get uh, just this um, fence, the standard fence. And obviously you get this in all of it because it's the dust extraction. So let's have a look at that now. It is very well wrapped, I have to say. And as I said, I bought this on um, Amazon, but you can buy uh, these Katsu uh, routers in a number of places. And at one of the places that I did look at before I went for Amazon uh, was eBay, but I'm, I'm really careful about buying stuff on e eBay, particularly uh, tools, because I always worry about um, being able to send them back if they're faulty. At least with Amazon, you've got the protection of it being Amazon. So. The spanner, and I think that looks like the second collet. It's got two uh, collet sizes. So I think that looks like the second collet, and there's the second attaching screw. And that, uh, I presume, fits in. Yeah, fits in there like that. It clicks in that side. There's a little hole there for it. And then uh, around this side, that's where uh, you put the screw in. So that's all of that. Let's have a look at the fence. Again, uh, made of metal. So uh, that is the entire um, set. 
the entire set that I bought. And as I said, I did buy, you didn't have to buy this, you can just buy it on its own, but I did buy the set. So, really nice, first impressions, really, really good. But of course, first impressions are easy. Let's take a closer look at the router now. Okay, so this is a close up of the um, router, as you can see. Um, it is actually really um, nicely made. Even the uh, clip for connecting the base look has got a little rubber um, tab, a little rubber sort of handle on the tab, I suppose. Um, it's Although the video review is not about this base, um, it is very, very similar. Uh, to the Makita and I know in all the videos everyone says oh you know it's an exact replica but blimey it really looks identical I think if you had the Makita router next to it and you didn't say which one um, was which I think you'd be hard pressed to know um, that this is not the Makita to be honest with you um, it's very very sturdy as well I've just checked and it says it weighs uh, just over five um kilograms on the description in Amazon and I can completely uh, believe that it is quite a chunky little thing. Um, I'm going to take the base off now and we'll actually have a look at the unit. Okay so having taken the plunge um, base off there is uh, the unit, Oops, sorry there, uh, there is the unit. Um, again, really nice uh, solid construction uh, on the metal and you can see the collet there. The collet is a quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch, which I don't think is, um, is standard uh, in any um, way, shape or form, but um, it is a nice little unit. And to test it, I think the first thing I would like to do is just put it on, uh, give it a go, see how loud uh, how many decibels it is and then we'll try it out on some pieces of wood. So let's give it a go now. Okay, so as you will have just seen or just heard, and I'll pop it up on the screen, um, I just cycled through the uh, six different um, speeds on the router, uh, router there, and <clears throat> the highest it got to was uh, 63 decibels, I think, uh, which isn't a lot. But the interesting thing was, from sort of speed three to speed six, although you could hear, noticeably hear, how much faster it was going, um, the actual speed... Uh, sorry, the actual sound wasn't a lot louder, uh, even though, you know, it was obviously rotating more. So it was going faster, producing more power, but it wasn't producing uh, more sound. So I will record it when I'm going to put it on some wood and just see what it goes like through that. But pretty quiet. I've had other tools that are well in excess of that. I'm not sure if there's a limit that um, power tools are supposed to be, but I was impressed with that. So what I'm going to do now is get a strip of wood and let's just give it a go, see how it works. Okay, so I've got an old piece of wood here, um, scrap wood, and I've got a bit, which I think is like a, a round over bit, and what it's gonna do is cut a, a nice groove uh, all the way along. I'm also gonna put on the dust distraction and see how that works out. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna start on speed number three. Hmm. Now, interesting, there's a problem straight away. My dust extraction doesn't connect with that. It's a different size. It's almost exactly uh, the same size, which is a bit of a problem 
because I don't want to get dust all over the workshop. But I suppose for this little test, we'll just have to do that. But interesting how that's a standard size UK vacuum and that's obviously not fitted. So we'll just go without and hopefully it won't make too much mess. That's a nice breeze. As you can see, it has cut out a really lovely groove. It's a nice shape, but it was really pulling. So let's try it on maximum speed and see how that works. Okay, so it's made a nice, it's made a groove. It's a bit wobbly, but to be fair, I think that's down to me uh, more than anything else. Obviously, I haven't got a guide here or anything to rest it up against. So um, it will just literally continue until I keep pulling. But not a bad groove. Um, I'm just going to run it over for another pass from the beginning and see if that's any better. Okay, still uh, very wobbly, but to be honest with you, it could that could just be my router skills uh, more than anything else it has cut enough and it's certainly powerful enough so i'm just going to put on a little grooving um router that attachment that i've got and let's give that a go So this is the finished uh, groove. I have to say um, it's a lot, uh, it went through it a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Um, I've used this grooving bit quite a few times when I was making some radiator covers and I really struggled with my Ryobi to get it to uh, cut a channel. This it's cut absolutely perfectly. It's very wobbly, obviously I was just hand doing it, but uh, really, really impressed with um, the router. I, I have to say I wasn't sure what it was going to be like and I wasn't really sure what to expect but the two bits I've tried both really really fantastic and one of the other things um, which I'm not sure if you can see here <clears throat> the wheel that moves up and down the groove to adjust the depth is made of metal whereas my other one my, my Ryobi one it's made of a piece of hard plastic and obviously the Audi work zone one the cheap one it was made out of plastic and that does make a heck of a difference it makes it feel really really quite sturdy in your hand so let's have a final review and get my thoughts on my katsu router okay so here's my final verdict on the katsu router number one i'm going to say i am a fan of the router i wanted something that I wasn't going to spend a fortune on, uh, something that was very versatile, did a lot of things, and most importantly was powerful enough for the job. Now to me, this has ticked all of those boxes, particularly as I got the set that came with all of the other bases, which A, saved a lot of money, and B, I've got everything I need now, probably to do everything I'm ever going to need to do with this. I have got a plunger router, I've got the Bosch 1400 uh, plunge router which to be honest I don't use very often the reason I don't use it very often is to be to get it out to set it up it's quite cumbersome and it's a very very powerful router and I don't necessarily need that all the time but I think that as somebody who does occasional uh, routing I think the Katsu is going to be absolutely perfect for me it's very sturdy it feels very powerful when you're using it and all of the uh, cuts that I did all of the uh, routes that I did looked really really good I was super impressed with it and again it was very very cost effective it was quite a cheap router with all of the accessories that came with it so for me really good value for money one of the things I think I would like to do though is to incorporate incorporate this in some sort of um, design to go in my table saw very much like Thomas has done on uh, casual DIY here's the link if you haven't seen that video where he builds a sort of box, a bigger box. And if you've seen my video, which is up here, uh, where I built the router uh, table extension, I literally just attached it to a piece of wood and that wasn't very effective. So I am, that's an upcoming project on the Garage Workshop to get a proper 
uh, box to fill this in that will go on my table saw uh, so I can have a router table. If this is your first time at the Garage Workshop, please subscribe and don't forget to like and comment. If you're a regular viewer, thank you so much. I'm filming this at the end of January in 2022. And at the time of speaking, I think I've got 249 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. I've got lots of other content. If you haven't seen any of those, please go back through my back catalogue and look at everything. And I hope you have a fantastic week, fellow woodworkers. I'll catch you next time on the Garage Workshop. Take care.